we have seen that the periodogram gives us a spectrum estimate with high variance and high spectral leakage, but otherwise with good resolution. Now we've seen that we can use a modifier or a windowed periodogram in order to reduce the spectral leakage at the expense of some of this resolution. However, none of these methods address the variance of the estimate, so this is what we'll look at now. So let's begin by considering the concept of periodogram averaging. So what we previously assumed was that we had a block of samples from a process, so we had capital N samples, and these were the basis for our estimate, be it the periodogram or the modified periodogram. However, if it were the case that we had capital K such blocks of data, what we could do is we could compute an estimate of the power spectral density from each of the blocks, but then we could take all of these estimates and create an even more reliable estimate by taking the average of the individual estimates. And one can show that if these blocks are independently drawn from the process, then the variance of this improved estimate will only be a factor of 1 over k times the variance of any individual estimate. And since the variance of the periodogram and also the modified periodogram is proportional to the squared power spectral density of the original process, the variance of this new and improved estimate would only be 1 over k times the original power spectral density squared. So in particular, if you choose the number of blocks very large, or if you have access to a large number of data blocks, you could create an estimate with a variance which is very small. And this is also what was done in order for, to create the numerical examples where we showed the ensemble average of the periodogram estimate. So in that case, several periodogram estimates were computed, and we took the average and plotted that. However, for a particular case, we of course don't have access to capital K blocks. So we're given capital N samples, and we have to do as well as we can with these capital N samples. So this is the problem of the spectrum estimation. But we can still use the concept of periodogram averaging. So the way to use this concept is to take our N samples and you divide it into k blocks of length L, where L is smaller than N. And this gives rise to a method called Bartlett's method for estimating the power spectral density. So in Bartlett method, you would choose the indices k and L, so that k times L is equal to the number of samples, or uh, at least less than the number of samples. Then we, you would create k blocks of length L from the original data, uh, you compute for each of these blocks a periodogram estimate and then you average these in order to get your final estimate of the power spectral density. And the idea here is that this estimate will have a lower variance than if you would have computed the periodogram for the entire data block, since that would have involved no averaging at all. However, Bartlett's method can reduce the variance by a factor of k, which is good. But there is a price to pay for this. So what do you think the price is if you apply Bartlett's method? So do you think the side lobe levels of the estimate will increase by a factor of k? Or do you think that the side lobe levels will increase by a factor of l? Or will you have a resolution which is decreased by a factor of k, or a resolution which is decreased by a factor of l? Or don't you think there is any significant penalty to be paid by choosing Bartlett's method over the periodogram method? Well, the correct answer is option number three. So the re resolution would be decreased by a factor of k. And this is because we are now using length L blocks. And uh, for the periodogram based on the entire data, we would have a length N block. So the, since the resolution depends on the length of the block, which we saw how this affects the windows, since we're now using a length L block, instead we have a decrease, uh, decrease in the number or in the resolution by a factor of n over l, which is equal to k in this case. So we can exemplify this using the AR4 process that we used before in order to exemplify spectral estimators. So this process has a power spectral density given by the black curve. And if we do a periodogram estimate based on 256 samples for this process, it could look something like this. So different realizations of this process and estimate would lead to different estimates. And the amount of up and down for any particular point of the estimate would be quite large since the periodogram has a large variance. So you can create estimates which are consistently closer to the true power spectral density by using Bartlett's method here. So in this particular case, we would still use 256 samples 
but we could divide them into say blocks of length 64 in which case we would have four blocks to average over so if we do that we see that we have an estimate which is over overall closer to the true power spectrum and we will also see that if we draw several more realizations of this process the amount of variation between realizations would be reduced so we should have a variance which is only a factor of one four of the variance of the periodogram since we have k uh, equal to four blocks to average over and now in Bartlett's method if you obtained more samples so if we increase the number of samples that we had access to from 256 up to 1024 we could use those in several different ways so either we could use them to increase the resolution of our estimate by increasing the length of each block or we could use it to decrease the variance by increasing the number of blocks keeping the length of each such block fixed so let's assume that we do that so we increase the number of blocks from 4 to 16 so we still use uh, so we use a uh, data number or data length of 1024 still keeping the blocks the same but increasing number of blocks and what we see now is that the variation between different realizations would even be further reduced and in this particular case it turns out that the deviation of the estimate from the true power spectral density has more to do with spectral leakage rather than variance of the estimator and we can of course address that using modified periodograms instead of periodograms as we saw before if we change the periodogram built into Bartlett's method by a modified periodogram what would happen is that we would take each of these blocks of data that we cut out of our total set of data and we would multiply it with a smooth window before computing the Fourier transform and building the modified estimate however one can argue that this is an inefficient use of data because data close to the borders of the blocks would get multiplied by a small number so in, an, in effect we're not using as much of that data as we could so if you choose to use a smooth window like this in Bartlett's method what you could in fact do is to create an increased number of blocks and let them partially overlap and apply a window to each of, such, each of these data. So each of these blocks would not be as informative as it would be dependent or statistically dependent on the previous block since you have this overlap but you would get an increased number of blocks by doing this partial overlap and that would overall lead to a reduced variance and this is the basis of a method called Welsh method so in Welsh method we would choose three parameters instead of two so you would choose k the number of blocks you would choose l the length of each block and you would choose a factor d which models the overlap between blocks so k times l so the number of blocks times the block length would in this case be equal to or strictly greater than the samples and this d parameter which would explain the shift of each block would be somewhere between the full length of a block and half the length of a block allowing for at most 50% overlap and then you would create these blocks by taking overlapped portions of the data and again create an average estimator by taking the average of these length L modified periodograms and you get an estimator which would look like this where you again is this factor based on the window in order to account for uh, an absolute value of the window If we look at that numerically, returning to the last example with Bartlett's method applied to a data length of 1024 data samples divided into length 64 blocks, so we get 16 blocks. If we used Welsh method with 50% overlap, we would instead of 16 blocks get a total of 31 blocks. And in this particular case, we apply the Hamming window to the data when we overlap the blocks. So this will have two effects. So first of all, the variance will be reduced from what we saw in Bartlett's method. Also, because we're using a window to the data, we will at the same time reduce the spectral leakage. So the deviation between the estimated power spectrum and the true power spectrum in these regions where we have low power spectral density would be reduced by the fact that we use a window that reduces the spectral leakage. And since we have a larger number of blocks, we see that the variance between estimates uh, or different realizations of the estimate would be reduced. So what we have done with Welsh method is to create an estimator that's consistently more reliable for estimating the power spectral density and at any particular frequency.
And we can now compare that to the estimate produced by the periodogram using the same amount of data, so in this case, 1,024 samples. So here you see the Welsh estimate in red and the periodogram estimate in blue. And what we can see is that the Welsh estimate for any particular frequency, it will be consistently closer to the true power spectrum than the periodogram estimate will be. So the price that we pay for this is that we have a decreased resolution of the estimator. So at any particular point where the true power spectral density has these sharp peak, we wouldn't be able to capture them as well using this lower resolution method, where the lower resolution is caused by the fact that we apply a rather short window with a wide uh, main side lobe, causing the decrease in the 3 dB bandwidth of that window and a reduction in the resolution of the estimate. So, to summarize, we have seen that by averaging the periodogram or the modified periodogram over a large number of windows cut out of the data, we could have effectively reduced the variance of the estimate at the expense of the resolution since we're now working with shorter blocks. In terms of the methods that we looked at, Bartlett and Welsh, Bartlett is somewhat simpler to implement, in particular when we have block-based data coming into a system. However, when we have access to the whole data and we're allowed to overlap block, as in Welsh method, Welsh method is usually preferable due to the fact that it gives both lower variance and also suppresses the side lobes better or the spectral leakage through the use of the window that we have in Welsh method.